Hey everyone. I recently posted a cycles render that I did in Blender of semi-realistic skin on Google Plus. And a few of the people on Google Plus said that they would like to see a video of how to reproduce the results that I got. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, I've already set up the scene. I've got Suzanne here, which is what I'm going to use to do the actual material on. And uh, I've got some emissive lights set up here. Some some cycles lights. And I've got the camera, of course. Now I've got that focused on Suzanne here, so we can get an up-close-and-personal view of her when I we get the the material done. Now, I'm going to be using nodes for this, so I'm going to switch to the node editor, and then <clears throat> I will add a new material to Suzanne. Now, this is a fairly complex process. It, uh, it will take some some finessing, we'll say. And I I will take it slow so you'll hopefully be able to follow along. But um I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the the materials nodes here. Let's click that little button there. And what we start out with here is two two nodes. Now I'm not going to be using this diffuse uh, node yet, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, I'm actually going to be using several mix shaders in this. In fact, I'm going to be using three. I'm going to be mixing diffuse, translucency, and uh, an image, and a glossy shader. So, um, I'll go ahead and get that started. The first one that I'm going to add by pressing Shift and A is a mix shader. I'm going to be using several of these, so. But I'm, I'm going to feed the mix shader into surface. Now I want this value to be set to 0.1. This is the part where I'm going to feed the the glossy shader in as well as the other mix shaders. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add the glossy shader. Now the, the roughness of this glossy shader is going to be 0.4 and for the color it's going to use, I'm going to be using 0.8 0.75 and uh, 0.5, I think. Now, for for the the other shader here, I'm going to use another mix shader. And I'm going to feed that into the the first shader of this other mix shader. Okay, so <clears throat> for this, I'm going to use a diffuse. I'm going to feed that into the first one, and for the second one, another mix shader. Like I said, this is a complex process. It takes a lit uh, a lot of a lot of different mixing. But you can you'll be able to see the results when I'm done. And actually while I'm thinking about it, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch this over to rendered so you can see in real time what's going on. something that I need to do real quick is change this to 
the GPU compute. Otherwise, I'm going to lag really badly. And I don't want that. Okay, so we, we've got our, our diffuse shader here. And I want, I'm going to set the color in the diffuse to 1.0, 0.8. And 0.35. This will give us our initial color to work with. Now, by using these mix shaders together, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be mixing several different colors to get the result that I'm looking for. Uh, skin isn't actually one solid color; it's several colors mixed together to produce an effect. Uh, skin also has pores, which I'm going to be doing later on with the displacement for the material output. But uh, we, we've got our, our initial color here with the diffuse. Now, I'm going to set the the value of this to 0.75 so it's less diffuse and more this mix shader or vice versa I don't I don't know which it is <sighs> okay now <clears throat> in this mix shader the first value that I want to use is a translucent shader And the color for that will be 0 0.8, 0 0.55, and 0.38. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit more like skin. Now, for this one, I'm going to use 0.15. Now it's looking a lot more like skin. <laughs> okay, now for the second part of this mix shader, I'm going to use an image texture just so it has a little bit of texture to it. Um, it's not just a solid, it's not just two solid colors. Um, I'm going to feed that into the other shader here. And then I'm going to open a skin texture that I've already got from Google. I feed that into it. Now I'm going to add a texture coordinate. And a mapping. Okay, so I'm going to feed the mapping into the texture, the image texture, and then I'm going to feed the coordinate into the mapping. And by doing this, I can actually scale the image down, which is what I want to do, and uh, tile it. So I'm going to change the, the scale here to 10, and this automatically tiles it. Now by using the generated, I don't have to worry about UV mapping right this minute. So. If you want to UV map, you can use the, the UV texture coordinate. Okay, so that that's pretty close. Now I'm going to bump this up a little bit. I'm going to change this to 50. So it'll continue on up. And you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly what it looks like. And it's starting to look like skin. Now, I'm going to use the same image as the displacement, or the bump mapping, if you will. So I'm just going to copy these three here, paste them, and then will move them down here so they're 
in a separate area. Okay. Now I can feed this directly into displacement. But I don't want to do that. Because I don't have any control of how much it's displacing it. And in most cases that's probably fine, but in this case I don't want it to be displaced as much. So what I'm going to use is a mix RGB and I'm going to feed this in this into the displacement here. And then I'm going to feed the image texture into color 2. Maybe, if it will let me. There we go. <laughs> and now I'm going to use multiply. And by using multiply, it will actually let me change the value or how much it's displaced. And I just want to use the 0.5 that's already in there. So that's perfectly fine. Now, that is exactly how I did it. Actually, I've refined the process a little bit. I've changed changed it up. And it actually looks, looks a little bit more like skin than it did in the, uh, the initial renders. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and render this out. I'm going to change this to thousand and uh, you'll be able to see the results this part is going to take some time so I'm going to pause the video while it does it and go ahead and let it render out and then I'll unpause it when it's finished okay so the render has completed and as you can tell it took almost seven minutes to do that it uh, does take a while but uh, the results are definitely worth it. As you can see, it is a almost photorealistic render of skin. It looks really good. So, um, so with the the bump mapping, it actually looks like there's pores, and you can see that there's um, different coloring, different shading just by using this uh, effect here. So it, 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 it ends up looking really good. So anyway, that's, that's how you do it. I'm going to zoom in here and give this a once over again so you can see. You get the material output, a mix shader, another mix shader, <laughs> um, the glossy, which gives it a, a nice um, shiny effect and then the diffuse another mix shader translucent with a color that's pretty important um, the image texture the mapping which helps out quite a bit and then for the displacement the multiply, the image texture, the mapping, which this part's important, and the texture coordinate. <coughs> so that is the very complex way to make semi, at least semi, realistic looking skin. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I will be happy to answer them. And if you didn't quite understand something in the video, just let me know. I will I will be happy to clear it up. So, thanks for watching.